Now next few years going to be crazy for gaming because of technology of course, so let me tell you why you should be excited for each year with one game that gonna stand out. For 2024 be ready for Mario and Luigi, let's rewind a bit. The Mario and Luigi series kicked off back in 2003 with Superstar Saga on the Game Boy Advance. From the jump, it was clear this wasn't your average Mario game. It blended the charm of the Mushroom Kingdom with deep RPG mechanics and a unique battle system that made you feel like a boss controlling both bros. But what really set this series apart? The writing, hands down. These games are hilarious. They took characters we've known for years and gave them actual personalities. Luigi wasn't just Mario's sidekick anymore. He was a fully fleshed out character with his own quirks and fears. And don't even get me started on Bowser. His grumpy, over-the-top villain routine in these games is comedy gold. The impact? Massive. These games showed that Mario could work in genres beyond platforming. They proved that Nintendo's characters had depth and could carry complex, story-driven games. Plus, they introduced a whole generation of players to RPGs in a fun, accessible way. Over the years the series has given us some unforgettable moments. Remember turning into a ball in Partners in Time? Or Bowser as the playable character in Bowser's Inside Story? Each game brought something new to the table while keeping that core Mario and Luigi charm. Now, with this series coming back, it's not just nostalgia, it's pure hype. So yeah, that's why this comeback is such a big deal. For 2025, you know, I know, everyone knows, it's GTA 5 year. I've been following the GTA series for years, and each installment just seems to get bigger and better. With GTA 6, I'm expecting Rockstar to pull out all the stops. I mean, think about it. GTA 5 is already one of the best-selling games of all time, and that came out way back in 2013. The hype for a new entry has been building for over a decade now. I can't even imagine how many people are gonna rush to grab this game on day one. I'm betting Rockstar's been cooking up something special all this time. With the power of new consoles and PCs, I'm picturing a game world that's more alive and detailed than anything we've seen before. And let's not forget about the story. GTA's always had this knack for tapping into the zeitgeist, you know? Online play is gonna be huge too, I reckon. GTA Online's been printing money for Rockstar, so I'm expecting them to go all out with the multiplayer in GTA 6. Now, will it be the greatest game of all time? That's a big call. But best selling? I'd put money on it. The GTA brand is just too strong, and the anticipation is through the roof. I gotta say though, part of me is a bit nervous. Can any game live up to this much hype? But if any studio can pull it off, it's Rockstar. Alright, let's talk about The Elder Scrolls 6 in 2026. First off, we're talking about a series with some serious history. The Elder Scrolls has been around since the 90s, and it's basically shaped the way we think about open-world RPGs. Each game in the series has pushed the envelope, giving players more freedom and more detailed worlds to explore. Skyrim, the last main entry, dropped back in 2011, and it's still going strong. That's over a decade of people diving into this one game, modding it, replaying it, and basically living in its world. So you can imagine the anticipation that's been building for a new installment. What makes The Elder Scrolls special? It's all about that sense of adventure. These games drop you into a massive world and just let you loose. Want to be a noble hero? Go for it. Rather be a sneaky thief? That's cool too. The amount of player choice is pretty mind-blowing. Then there's the lore. The Elder Scrolls has built up this incredibly rich universe over the years. We're talking deep histories, complex political systems, and wild magical concepts. For lore junkies, it's like catnip. With The Elder Scrolls 6, people are expecting Bethesda to take everything they've learned and crank it up to 11. We're talking about next-gen graphics, more dynamic worlds, and probably some gameplay innovations we haven't even thought of yet. But it's not just about the tech. Fans are itching to see which part of Tamriel we'll be exploring this time. Will we finally get to see Hammerfell? Or maybe a return to the Somerset Isles? The hype is real, because The Elder Scrolls isn't just a game series. It's a whole vibe. It's about getting lost in another world, creating your own stories, and experiencing adventures that feel uniquely yours. So yeah, 2026 might seem far off, but for Elder Scrolls fans, it's like waiting for Christmas. The big question is, can it live up to the hype? But that's a discussion for another day. Alright, let's talk about the Cyberpunk sequel hitting in 2027. I gotta say, 
I'm pretty hyped about this one. First off, CD Projekt Red is behind this, and these folks are something special. They've shown they can create incredible, immersive worlds with the Witcher series. Sure, the original Cyberpunk 2077 had a rocky start, but they've put in the work since then. I think what gets me excited is the potential. The original Cyberpunk 2077 laid down some solid groundwork. The world of Night City was impressive. All neon lights, corpo skyscrapers, and grimy back alleys. It felt alive, you know? And the story, when it hit its stride, was pretty compelling. Now imagine what they could do with a sequel. They've learned from their mistakes, they've got the tech figured out, and they've had time to really dig into what makes a cyberpunk world tick. I'm looking forward to seeing how they evolve the cyberpunk genre. It's not just about cool tech and flashy implants. It's about exploring themes of humanity, corporate power, and what it means to be free in a world where everything's for sale. CD Projekt Red has shown they can handle complex themes, so I'm eager to see where they take it. Plus, let's be real, the gameplay in Cyberpunk 2077 was fun when it worked right. The gunplay, the hacking, the different builds you could create, there was a lot of good stuff there. With a sequel, I'm hoping they'll refine all of that, and maybe throw in some new surprises. Yeah, the original game was a bit underwhelming at launch, but it's come a long way since then. And that's what gives me hope. CD Projekt Red stuck with it, improved it, and showed they care about delivering on their promises. So yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic about this sequel. It's a chance for them to really nail the cyberpunk experience they were aiming for the first time around. Now, let's talk about Fallout 5 dropping in 2028. I gotta say, the hype for this one is real, and for good reason. First off, we're looking at a massive gap since Fallout 4, which came out way back in 2015. That's over a decade of waiting for the next main series entry. Sure, we had Fallout 76 in between, but it wasn't quite the same as a full-fledged single-player Fallout experience. I think what's got everyone buzzing is the return to what made Fallout special in the first place. We're talking about those sprawling post-apocalyptic landscapes, the dark humor, the wild characters, and the freedom to shape your own story in the wasteland. Fallout's always been about more than just surviving in a nuclear wasteland. It's about rebuilding society, making tough choices, and seeing the consequences of your actions play out. With Fallout 5, I'm expecting Bethesda to push these elements even further. Plus, think about how much gaming tech has advanced since Fallout 4. I'm picturing more detailed and dynamic worlds, smoother gameplay, and maybe even some new mechanics we haven't seen before in the series. One thing that's always been cool about Fallout is how it reflects our own world and anxieties. I'm really curious to see what kind of themes they'll tackle this time around, given everything that's happened in the world since Fallout 4. And let's not forget about the modding community. Fallout games have always been a playground for modders, and I can only imagine what they'll do with a new entry in the series. Of course, there's also that nostalgia factor. For a lot of us, Fallout was our first taste of a truly open-world RPG. Coming back to that world after so long, it's like coming home, you know? So yeah. 2028 might seem far off, but for Fallout fans, it's like we can already hear that classic war, war never changes intro in our heads. All right, let's chat about The Last of Us making a comeback in 2029. So, we're looking at another long gap between games here. That's a lot of time for Naughty Dog to cook up something special. They've always been known for pushing the envelope, both in terms of graphics and storytelling. I'm really curious to see where they take the story this time. The world of The Last of Us is brutal, but it's also full of these intense human moments. That's always been the series' strong point. It's not just about surviving the infected, it's about the relationships that form in this messed up world. Gameplay-wise, I'm expecting some serious upgrades. The Last of Us Part 2 already had some pretty slick mechanics, so I can only imagine what they'll come up with given a few more years of development time. One thing I'm looking forward to is seeing how they handle the post-apocalyptic setting this time around. We've seen the overgrown cities and the wilderness, but there's still so much potential to explore in this world. And let's talk about the characters for a sec. Whether you loved or hated the direction they took in part two, you gotta admit it was bold. I'm keen to see if they introduce new faces or bring back some familiar ones. The thing about The Last of Us is that it's never been afraid to take risks and challenge players. Yeah, that approach didn't land for everyone with part two, but it's also what makes the series exciting. 
I guess what I'm saying is, even if you weren't totally sold on the last game, there's still reason to be hyped for this one. Naughty Dog's track record speaks for itself, and they've had plenty of time to listen to feedback and refine their approach. So yeah, 2029 might be a ways off, but I reckon it'll be worth the wait. What are you hoping to see in the next Last of Us? Any particular story beats or gameplay features you're crossing your fingers for? Let me know if you want me to dig into any part of this more. Finally, I'm hoping we might see a RDR game in 2030. First off, we're talking about Rockstar here. These folks know how to make a sequel count. Look at how RDR2 built on the first game. It was like they took everything great about the original and cranked it up to 11. I think what makes the idea of RDR3 so exciting is the potential for storytelling. The Red Dead series has always been about more than just being a cowboy simulator. It's about the death of the Old West, the price of loyalty, and the struggle between freedom and civilization. Imagine what kind of story they could tell with another decade of gaming evolution under their belt. The world building in these games is just on another level. I still remember the first time I rode into St. Denis in RDR2. It felt like stepping into a living, breathing slice of history. With RDR3, I'm picturing an even more detailed, more interactive world to explore. And let's talk about characters for a sec. Arthur Morgan and John Marston are some of the most well-written protagonists in gaming. Whoever they choose to focus on in RDR3, you know they're gonna be complex, flawed, and incredibly human. Gameplay-wise, I'm expecting Rockstar to push the envelope again. Maybe we'll see even more realistic NPC interactions, or new ways to approach missions that we haven't even thought of yet. One thing that's always set the Red Dead series apart is its attention to historical detail. With RDR3, they could explore a different era of the American frontier, or maybe even take us to a completely different part of the world. I guess what I'm saying is, even though 2030 feels like a lifetime away, the idea of another Red Dead game is enough to get me excited. It's not just about playing a game, it's about stepping into another time and place, you know? What about you? Got any theories about where or when RDR3 might be set? Any features you're hoping to see? Let me know if you want me to expand on anything. Thanks for watching this video. It really mean a lot. I'm gonna see you in the next video. Till then take care and have a nice day. Subscribe.